Let me describe the situation in Israel and Jerusalem when the Lord returns by taking you back to 1948. Most of you can't remember that far back. Six million Jews had died. Can you fathom that number? Somebody tell me, how many people in Alberta? How many? Three million, how many in Saskatchewan? Anybody know? Oh, that's a long way away. No, it's part of Canada, you know. <laughs> you could take these two provinces and wipe out everybody and you would not probably have quite as many people as died among the Jewish people. Are you with me this morning? Six million Jews have died. The Second World War was over and something had to be done for the Jews. On May 14, 1948, the short, white-haired David Ben-Gurion stood up to read It's one of the most incredible moments of history. 1948. May. This little white-haired man stood up and wrote, read it. Israel's Declaration of Independence. Huge moment. Most important moment since Christ ascended to heaven, unless you want to take 70 AD. Five Arab nations stood not only on the borders of their land, inside the borders, ready to push them into the sea. The Mediterranean Sea, by the way. I cannot paint a more hopeless picture for you than the picture of Israel on that day. Than not a more hopeless picture. It would be something like our little hamlet of La Creek taking on all the rest of Canada. Are you with me? We men are not, not that foolish, are we? We, we don't take on people in war anyway. Well, except when we're coming down with Christ, by the way. Sheer desperation drove the Jews to such a risk. And then the war began. Israel had been denied the right by Britain to buy guns and ammunition. You can't buy anything. They put them in jail if they bought a gun. The Arabs had hordes of both. Could buy anything they wanted. Shiploads of Jews came to the land and they sent them back to die. United States ships came to the United States. Argentina, Canada, they sent them back to die. And no Jew can buy a gun. It was a war that should have lasted a few days at the most, but desperation drove the Jews on. It is hard to believe what this handful of Jews accomplished, but the odds took their toll on these Jewish people, and a month later, a month after the war began, they were this far from extinction. There's a book in our library. If, you, if you're interested in this history, you have to read it. Oh, Jerusalem, you're not going to read a better account of these days than that book. But a miracle took place. It was kind of an ordinary miracle. We hear of them today. A ceasefire was called for 30 days. Uh, America was kind of instrumental in bringing this ceasefire into being. They saw where the things were. Well, the ceasefire finally came into being. You know how these ceasefires are. They don't want to come into being. It finally came into being. And the Arab nations, guess what they did? Abba Ibn has said of the Arab nations, you know, they never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. They rested. They rested. When that ceasefire was called, the Jew doubled his efforts. They were all over the world. They were buying whatever they could get their hands on and flew it to Israel against all laws and rules. The ceasefire was called June the 12th. 
July the 9th, war was to begin again. When the war resumed, it took that tiny little nation eight days to bring all the Arab nations to their knees to beg for a ceasefire. The miracle. Lots of miracles took place. You do not have a heart, a spot uh, in your heart for the Jew. Get one. God is on their side. Oh, he doesn't take a Jew as unbeliever any more than anybody else. That's why they're going through everything they're going through. I want to recommend this book to you, O Jerusalem. It's in the library. You will not read finer material. Now, why did I tell you that little story? Because when we read Revelation 19, and we see the Lord on a white horse in heaven that has been opened, on earth Israel is once more in the very same predicament. They are within this much time of annihilation. Jacob and Esau meet again, and Jacob is about to die. For once, after so many trials, this world may truly become Judenrein. That's what Hitler wanted. A world that was Judenrein, cleansed of every Jew. But in heaven, the Lord Jesus sits on a white horse. He is poised and ready to exit heaven. I want you to see this. Look at Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. On earth the picture is a disaster. I want you to go with me to Zechariah 14. Now you you, uh, might want to try to keep your fingers in some of these references. We'll go back and forth somewhat. Zechariah chapter 14. I want to read verses 1 through 2. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and your spoil will be divided in your midst, for I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, the houses rifled, the women ravished, half of the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Go now to Luke 21. You might want to keep your finger in Zechariah. Go to Luke chapter 21. It's amazing how the scriptures tell the same story. Luke chapter 21. I want to read verses 22 through 26. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days, For there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on earth distress of nations and perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This morning I went over these notes, and I wondered what, what event on earth triggers the Lord Jesus to say to his horse, what event? I said we're in a shop. doesn't matter if we go over time. So I want to tell you what I think. In Romans, the apostle slips a section into the book that for beginners might seem unrelated to the book. But it has to do with Israel. Chapter 9, 10, and 11. The gist of the message is that though the church has been born, Israel has not been cut out of the olive or Israel has been cut out of the olive tree and the church has been grafted in but Paul says that if their cutting off brought about wonderful things 
the coming into existence of the church, what will their re-acceptance be like? If Israel's cutting off brought about wonderful things, how much more wonderful will it be when they are re-accepted? In fact, they will be re-accepted. So, I don't know how many fingers you have. Why don't you go over to Romans yet as well? Let me read verses 11 through 15. Chapter 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Talking about the Jew. Certainly not, but through their fall, to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Here, the church. Now, if their fall is... uh, now, if their fall is riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. If by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh and save some of them. That's the Jew. For if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? So it will bring about more wonderful things. Now look at verses 25 through 27. For I, do not desire, for I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. That's the end of the church. And so... All Israel will be saved, as it is written, the deliverer will come out of Zion, and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. Now you know when he's going to take away their sins? You know when? Same time he takes away our sins. You know when it is? When we repent. When Israel repents, he's going to take away their sins, going to be a new day and I think he's sitting on the horse just waiting for that moment because at the end of the tribulation Israel repents whatever is left of them now let's see what happens in Revelation chapter 19 how many fingers do you have 12 through 16 want to see now what happens His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 